To really understand global health, it's to understand that we have made an incredible leap in the last century in going from a place where in the most developed parts of the world, people only lived 47 years on average, to a place where across most of the world, people live over 75 years. Now this happened because in the first half of the last century, we were able to enumerate all the different ways that our only 13 organ systems can fail. And we enumerated 60,000 different ways that our bodies can fail, 60,000 different conditions and diagnoses. And our job has become deploying that capability to reduce suffering and improve survival, deploying that capability town by town to every person alive. Global health was thought to be predominantly about infectious disease and um, getting to the place where we recognize that now in the world, the biggest killers are no longer infectious diseases. Cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer. We have um, in the top five road traffic accidents, cancers in the top 10, and access to safe surgical care for everything from emergency cesarean section for childbirth, to trauma fracture repair, to laparotomy for everything from appendicitis to um, uh, abdominal surgery for hernias. These are critical to disability and survival. The reason why it's turning out to be that we're finding it's as cost effective to build first level surgical capacity as vaccines is because you're acting at a time when you have high leverage to ensure that you don't have people left with permanent disability from untreated disease because they, you have better survival over the long run. And that translates not only to better health and better uh, quality of life, but also better economic function and productivity. It's one of the best investments countries can make in, um, for their economy is ensuring access to a basic platform of universal health services, including essential surgical services and safe anesthesia. The next critical part is including programs for driving the quality and the safety forward by supporting professional organizations, which the WFSA does as a routine part of its work, and then providing education, training in the organization that I co-founded with WFSA and others um, called Lifebox. We make sure that basic low-cost pulse oximetry is available in every operating room, that there's training for now more than 6,000 anesthetic providers in safe anesthesia care, and bringing the checklist into the operating room so that you have safe surgical teams communicating in a structured way to assure the basic safety is taken care of every time. WFSA has launched its Safe Anesthesia for Everybody Today campaign, and that is a realistic proposition valuing the training, education, and equipment necessary for the safe care of a patient undergoing surgery and anesthesia, that is a realistic and major proposition that um, is a campaign we all can sign on to.